Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon and you are watching Israeli News Live. We have a breaking story this evening as the announcement uh, on the article that was sent to me by PeakOil.com that Russia is actually uh, working with Israel and signing a deal for the gas reserves in the offshore uh, there in Leviathan, wanting to be a part of that. Prophecy in the making as the hooks are set in the jaws of Gog. And, uh, but it's not perhaps what many people think it is. Let's take a look at this and let's look at the biblical implications as we speak about the prophecy here. Many people have the idea in mind that Russia is actually Gog, and I do differ with this, but I think if you'll bear with me, you'll understand why. Let's first take a look at the news that's come out. A very dear friend on Facebook there sent this to me. It says, Russia wants share in Israeli gas. According to peakoil.com on April the 25th, uh, 2016, this article came out yesterday. The Russian press reported at the end of last week that Russia was seeking to enter the Israeli natural gas industry following a meeting in Russia last Thursday between Russian and President Vladimir Putin and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. It is believed that Putin wants to take part of the development of the Leviathan gas reservoir. This was not the first time that Russia has tried to strengthen its foothold in the Middle East through the control of gas reservoirs. In February of 2013, Gazprom, the Russian state control, 50.1% uh, to 49.9% owned by private and other investors, national gas companies signed a memor memorandum of understanding to buy gas product from the Tamar Reservoir through a floating liquefied natural gas. Uh, facility. Gazprom agreed to buy 3 million tons of, of uh, a year, amounting to 4.1 uh, BCM. The project was never implemented, among other things, because of the Minister of National Infrastructure's energy. But that's not the only situation going on. We know that Russia did sign a deal with Bashar al-Assad as well as Mahmoud Abbas. So let's take a look at what's really going on and really who is Gog and who is Gog uh, of the land of Magog. Let's look at the biblical application of the scripture from Ezekiel chapter 38. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back, and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, and all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, with them, all of them, shields and helmets, Gomer and the bands in the house of Togarma and the north quarters and all the bands and the many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all the company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a garden to them. After many days shalt thou be visited in the latter days. Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. That, remember now, Remember that scripture we used there not long ago in Ezekiel chapter 35 where God accuses Adam or Esau of putting Israel, their brother Jacob, to the sword in the time of their calamity and at the time their iniquity had an end. We proved it biblically without a shadow of a doubt that that is nothing less than the Roman Catholic Church of today. They are the true Edomites because God accuses them through the prophet Obadiah clearly identifying that Esau was the one that stood aloof, as Obadiah says, while your brother Jacob uh, was ransacked, so to speak, just paraphrasing, and all the treasures were carried back unto your own place. And of course, the Archetitus clearly identifies the Romans as being guilty of that very massacre. But the scripture in Ezekiel speaks of another prophecy of the children of Israel being put to the sword, and that is a time when their iniquity has an end. And of course, according to Daniel's prophecy, the reconciliation of iniquity. See, that is when, that is in modern days, and the third intifada has been the main source, has been the sword, the knife itself used by the Palestinians under the direction of the Vatican itself when their own 
uh, uh, Cardinal Jean Torrent, Louis Jean Torrent, stated that, and in, in this was in 2011, there will be no peace in Jerusalem until all the holy sites are resolved. So therefore, if there's not going to be any peace, who's the soldiers in this case? It's the Palestinians themselves. So it, uh, the Vatican has a very strong desire for Israel and taking over the whole land. We're going to go into that in a little bit, okay? So it says, In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered into, uh, uh, out of many people, of course being Israel, coming back to their own nation, against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. And yes, for some time, because of God's mercy and grace with an Israeli military, the children of Israel have been dwelling safely. But where does this part about the hook, bringing Gog uh, uh, of the land of Magog, bringing him out with hooks? Now notice that's plural, and it is in the Hebrew the same way. I've already sat there and read it from the uh, Masoretic Hebraic uh, text there. It is hooks and the jaws plural, and it's coming from the idea from Job chapter 41 as well. There's also a place in Isaiah, we'll bring that up in a little bit. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with, uh, with an hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down, all right? So see, no, they cannot do that, all right? So it's, it's going to take something that'll bring Leviathan out for the battle, all right? This is what's going on. So now let's take a look and see what's really taking place and what has been drawing Leviathan out. Because I argue that the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal is the Pope of Rome. That doesn't matter which Pope it is in power at that time, but I, 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 you'll see as we go on what, why I, I hold this idea. It's not Russia, but Russia is what causes them to come down. Let's take a look. Russia tightens links to Bashar al-Assad with Syria and the energy deal. We saw this back in 2013. FT.com reported that. The state-controlled Russian group uh, Soygazin Fatgaz and Syrian regime uh, this week signed a deal that allows for the exportation and drilling and development of products of oil and gas in a uh, 2,190 square kilometer area off Syria's coast. The first such deal for the country. And of course, we know that right after this, what happens not long after that, in fact, there was another signing of the deal in August of 2015. Putin confirms Russian military involvement in Syrian civil war. So Russia has to send his military down there to protect the agreement that he has made. If you remember, many times on national television, Putin has always said, the United States, the West, NATO, and their allies, he always puts them all together are not taking in consideration Russia's own national interest when they're doing all these big oil deals down in the Middle East. All right, so Russia's just trying to get a piece of the pie, if you would. All right, so the Telegraph reported this on September 5th, 2015. Russia is providing serious training and logistical support to the Syrian army. Vladimir Putin has said in the first public confirmation of the depth of Russia's involvement in the Syrian civil war. So he sends his troops down there to do what? To protect the deal he has made with Bashar al-Assad as the president. He doesn't want to lose him as president because he's got an oil contract there, right? Well, as soon as he did that in October the 30th, uh, CNN News on October 30th, 2016, uh, excuse me, 2015 is what that should be there. I apologize, I typed that in wrong. Syria Obama authorizes boots on the ground to fight ISIS. What? The Obama administration now is authorizing troops in Syria. According to Washington, CNN, the United States is set to deploy troops on the ground in Syria for the first time to advise and assist rebel forces combating ISIS, the White House said Friday. Well, this is right after President Putin sends his own military in there to protect his investment with Bashar al-Assad. And as we've reported before here on Israeli News Live, we have shared with you how that you have to understand the Vatican, who owns a huge stock in Gulf Shell, Gulf Oil, and, and Shell, uh, Gulf Oil International, and Shell Oil, they have a huge conglomerate of oil contracts and everything throughout the Middle East. That's including Turkey, Syria, uh, Jordan, and also, of course, Jordan doesn't produce hardly anything, but you have it also in Kuwait, uh, the United Arab Emirates. You know, the Vatican has a lot of, lot of investment in these countries. They do not want Russia coming in and messing up what they've got. 
This is why there's been a civil war to topple Bashar al-Assad so they get full control of the Vatican's investments in this country here. So, what happens? Rome does send in the United States. Now, another thing, Pope Francis begins, uh, begins Turkey's, Turkey visit on November 28th of 2014. Former Jesuit Alberto Rivera, remember, revealed that no pope visits a country until it's conquered by the papacy. All right, now this is the fourth such visit of a pope visiting Turkey. Uh, or the fourth pope, not the fourth visit, but the fourth pope to visit Turkey. What does the scripture say in Ezekiel 38 to Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal? See? Uh, so he puts the hook, he's going to put that hook or the hooks in the jaws of Gog. So he's going to draw him out there, but it's the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, which is none other than the, the papacy itself. Now notice the 77-year-old will become only the fourth pontiff to visit the Muslim-majority nation. Pope Francis begins a three-day visit to Turkey on Friday, during which he is due to discuss threats to Christian communities in the Middle East with President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. After meeting Erdogan, the 77-year-old Argentine will travel to Istanbul over the weekend, and he claims to want to forge a closer relationship between the Catholic Church and the Muslim world, reports Al Jazeera. Hey, let me tell you something. You think the Pope's just there talking about the Christians and everything? You know, he's talking to Mr. Erdogan, and this is something that I have to kind of speculate on, but he's talking to him about what advances they need Turkey to do in this war regarding Russia. There's a big problem there. And as we've reported as well before, remember that leak that came out of the Ukrainian news that says that they're working together with other NATO members there, that is Ukraine, and Turkey, Erdogan, President Erdogan, to remove Russia from Crimea. NATO is really in an, up in an, in an uproar over what Russia is doing there. Russia has crept down, took Crimea back. Uh, Russia slipped into Syria and has up, uh, uh, upset the whole balance there. And of course, why is the Vatican worried? Because of Israel. And the Vatican also knows that that uh, President Putin has signed the deal with none other than Mahmoud Abbas. Well, the Vatican is the one that has the ties with the Palestinians. How dare Russia step in? That's the way they would think anyway. Let's move on. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Well, you know, the guy that wears the crown is the Pope of Rome. Now, I put Pope Benedict up here because, as I said, it doesn't matter who's the Pope at the time when all this goes down. It's going to go down nonetheless. But you know what's interesting? I've taken, this, uh, taken the picture many times here of the horse there and Constantine sitting on him there, right there on the Vatican Basilica, St. Peter's Basilica there as you walk up. Look over, I forget if it's to the left or the right there, and there the uh, Constantine is predict. Uh, uh, Patik, uh, sitting on the horse. I can't get the word out right. Sorry. Anyway, uh, and, and, it's, and what do you know? He's the guy that helped form the Catholic Church, the first universal church as you were, because he was a universal leader. The statue of Constantine depicts him going forth to do exactly what the Bible says by John the Revel uh, Revelator. He went forth conquering and to conquer. And the papacy has been since then, ever since then, gone forth to do exactly that, to conquer. All right, now... Let's take a look. We look at the Gog and Magog issue here. I found a very interesting article on this called The Truth About Gog and Magog on WND.com News by Joel Richardson. Joel's also written a book about this issue here. But I think it's very important to bring this out uh, because, as I stated, I do not believe that Russia is Gog or Magog. And even like the young Nathan, the uh, young Jewish boy there that had the near-death experience that says that Gog is actually... Barack Obama. I happen to agree with him. And if you really think about it, you want to go to the land that's north, well, if you just kind of go over the other side of the globe, guess who sits north of Israel? It is the United States. All right, but what is this thing then about Gog then? And, and we look at the Vatican. Remember the prince. See, the prince is the Pope of Rome. He's not, Gog is not the prince, all right? Gog is the country, and yes, Obama represents Gog as the nation coming down with his, 
with the, with the hooks. Remember, as I said, it was plural, hooks and jaws. There's NATO members. The United States is only one of them. They lead the wars for Rome, but all the other NATO members go right along with it. And even some of the biblical scholars consider that Magog is actually Europe. Well, I'm not going to get into all that, but let's look at what uh, Joel Richardson had to say. The question that Bereans and students of the Bible prophecy must now ask ourselves is, why is there such a radical discrepancy between Magog's identification according to the popular belief and these various sc uh, scholarly resources? Are the atlases and many conservative scholars that created them all wrong? Or are the prophecy teachers wrong? How have the two groups arrived at such different conclusions? And he's talking about, uh, in his article, if you read it on WND here, he is speaking about, he's showing the different maps out there by, by uh, religious teachers, prophecy teachers, and they're all putting Russia as Gog and Magog. I've done the same thing myself in the past until I really begin to study this out and look at this from the biblical standpoint. And then I realize that Russia is not Gog or Magog, either one. But Russia does play a pivotal role in this. He's the one that forces Gog to come rolling out with all of its armor. You're going to see that in a minute because you're going to see more about why I'm holding this view here. All right, so let's look at what he says. The answer lies in different methods of interpretation used by these two groups. Most conservative trained scholars of the Bible use what is called the historical grammatical method of interpretation. This is to say that they simply identify the names found within Ezekiel's prophecy according to how Ezekiel himself would have understood them. Thus, in the late 7th and early 6th century BC, when Ezekiel prophesied Magog and Meshach and Tubal were known to have been to have dwelt in Asia Minor or modern-day Turkey. And as you can see on the map that he provided here, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, Togoma, uh, Gomer, all of these are in that particular area of Turkey. Well, no wonder why the prince of this region, Pope Francis, recently visited Turkey. And it didn't take long after he visited Turkey that Turkey really stepped up the heat on Syria, causing all kinds of problems. And of course, Barack Obama is not going to say anything against Erdogan because Erdogan happens to be the puppet uh, for the puppet master, Pope Francis. So that's why you see everybody bowing down to Erdogan right about now. And they're trying to make him look like the modern day Mahdi or the Antichrist. So Adnan Akhtar, you're kind of being... Uh, thrown under the bus when it comes to President Erdogan in this case. Persia was another case here. It spoke about the per Persia would be with them. Well, here is a good map for you for the Persian Empire. And it includes, in yellow, by the way, are all the countries that are sited on the United States side, or at least under the U U.S., or the U.S. has military bases there. Turkey, Jordan, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Kuwait, and there's actually several other small nations in those regions. Syria and Iran are the only two that are not. So if you're going to say that Russia is Gog and Magog coming down to take over Israel, well, all these other countries are going to have to turn against NATO, the United States, the Pope of Rome and everything, and they're going to go have to go side on the other side there. It's not going to happen. Even think about the young man, brother, little brother Nathan, the Jewish young man that had the near-death experience. Remember how he said there would come a war between Russia and the United States? But it'll be a short one. And then he said they're going to join in with the United States later. Now, I don't know if that's the case or not, but if that were the case, then everybody's going to go against Israel. And believe me, these other nations listed here all want to go against Israel, including Iran and Syria. So when the day comes that they're all going to go down there to try to take Israel, they may just very well join in just to have a piece of the action. Let's take a look, though, at U.S. military bases. As you can see on the map here, Iran is the only place, uh, and you can't, they have Syria with no bases there now, but the United States has military bases in Syria as well. They have them in Jordan. They don't show it, but they have bases in Jordan as well. They have bases in, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Oman. They have it in the UAE. They have it in Qatar. They have it in the United Arab Emirates. They have it in Saudi Arabia. They have it in uh, Iraq, uh, four bases in Iraq. They have three bases or four bases in Kuwait. They have uh, five, let's see, six bases in Turkey. 
Uh, and then when you're looking, remember the Persian Empire actually covered Afghanistan, Pakistan, and several other countries over there, Turkestan, all those places there. And the United States has military bases all over those places as well. So guess what? They're going to join together. So who is Gog? Who is the Prince of Gog? Well, it, no doubt, it, NATO is that military power. We'll go into that in a few moments. But let's take a look. Remember what the scripture said uh, in Ezekiel 38, 4. And put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor. Now that's kind of interesting. We can think of the different types of armor that they wear anyway as far as soldiers go, but it made me think when I saw that, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor. Clothed. In other words, different uniforms. I took this one picture here, a couple of reasons. One shows several different countries, including the United States. On the patches you see NATO, OTAN, NATO, OTAN. These are NATO forces there uh, from these different uh, countries, Co Croatia, the United States, etc all the different ones that you have on this particular image. But there was one thing that caught my attention, and I don't know if you can see it there, but you might see it on this one right here. On the U.S. arm right there, it has on the guy's patch under the flag, a serpent on there. It says, don't tread on me. Can you put hooks in Leviathan and draw him out? That gives you a new thought, doesn't it? Well, Isaiah 27 verse 1 says, In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. See, judgment's coming, friends. And Satan has used Rome and used his military, which is NATO, to conquer as much as he can. Now, Russia wants to share in the Israeli gas, as we saw at the beginning of this broadcast on peakoil.com. It also said in this article, Russia did not give up, however, Gazprom negotiated for several months to buy up 30% of the Leviathan Reservoir. This is why we see the idea of the hook in Leviathan's jaw. See, Russia, the whole thing about Leviathan, this gas field that they have named Leviathan, is helping for us to recognize the time in which we're living. Russia is not being drugged down here. Russia is out here making oil deals. But the more that Russia has gotten involved in the Middle East, it's forcing NATO to come down here. You see, the Vatican never really intended on having a war per se and going to combat in Israel. They just wanted to cause a lot of uneasy problems until the Israelis give up all of the country into the Vatican so the Vatican can run it for them and they would allow the Jews to live there. But Russia is causing the Vatican a lot of problems. That's why Russia or the, or the Vatican made sure that NATO and their allies slap sanctions on Russia. They're trying to cripple them financially. This is why the Vatican, notice the Vatican's never, no pope has ever visited Russia. They haven't got control of them yet. But they're really irritating the Vatican really bad now because of what they're doing in the Middle East. He signed an oil deal with Bashar al-Assad. That was a little bit too close for comfort. So what did they do? The Vatican made sure NATO and his alliance powers out there, as well as Saudi Arabia, Turkey, all these other countries that are not necessarily part of NATO, which Turkey is, but some of the countries that are not part of NATO will also be part of this fight against Russia. And they're stepping up the pressure everywhere, everywhere. Look at even where Armenia and Azerbaijan got into the conflict, civil war conflict. This happened after Russia moved in extra uh, combat and, and fighter planes and, and, and jets and everything into Armenia, getting ready for a war with Turkey. Well, the United States was given the commands by the Vatican to make sure that they create a civil war. Turkey did exactly that, helped Azerbaijan get into a civil uh, conflict with Armenia to cause Russia more problems. They're putting the hook in the, the hooks in the jaws of the Gog. See, why? And that's, why is it jaws? Why is it plural? Because it's all the NATO nations. He's going to drag them in there for this battle because Russia is causing them problems. 
Huh, very interesting, isn't it? So anyway, the reservoir originally realized by current partners that they lacked the financial capability, know-how, and connections needed to realize the huge reservoir's potential as soon as possible. According to the reports, other companies that expressed interest in a partnership in Leviathan included South Korean company Kogas, Chinese company, and Australian company Woodside. Gazprom has apparently submitted the highest bid. Russia is just causing all kinds of problems. And that's going to drag Leviathan. Is gonna, he's going to have that hook put in his jaw. It's not Russia being drugged down. Russia comes in willingly and happily. You see Russia being having any hooks in their jaws being brought down to the Middle East? Not a bit in the world. They're just there to make sure all their stuff is taken care of. But the United States... Notice how Barack Obama, he kept saying, no boots on the ground, no boots on the ground. And then they have the audacity uh, to say in their meeting there, where y'all get this from? Uh, Barack Obama never said that. Of course he said it. All the time he says it. Why? Because the United States people don't want to send their sons and daughters, and I don't blame them, into this conflict region. Why? We don't need to. But, so you got to get the hook in the jaw to bring them out, right? Now, let's take a look at something else here. As a reminder, a boss in Russia to sign energy deal. This was on Israel National News, January 23rd, 2014. Palestinian Authority PA Chairman Mahmoud Abbas, will, will, uh, while in Russia on Thursday, was reported to be signing a $1 billion natural gas project in Gaza with Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Med, uh, Med, Medvedev. While exact details of the deal or, or start dates for the project remain unclear, the Russian state news agency ITAR TASS reported that is, uh, Russia's natural gas giant Gazprom intends to produce 30 billion cubic meters of natural gas off Gaza's coast. Now they're wanting to get into Israel's Leviathan as well. Hmm, makes you wonder, doesn't it? Now, let's look at Ezekiel again. Or excuse me, Ezekiel's prophecy. Because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time their iniquity had an end. Remember what we said at the beginning of the broadcast? This is what? This is Esau. Esau who? Rome. Had a perpetual hatred for Israel and shed the blood of the children of Israel from by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, 70 AD, and the time their iniquity had an end, in the day you're living in now reconciliation of iniquity according to Daniel the 70th week of Daniel happens in this day see to reconcile bring them back on the iniquity that's going off the the the, the straight path and straight and narrow way they got to be brought back and why and what do you have there you have the third intifada the, the the Palestinians the little thugs for the Vatican running around there stabbing Jews with the edge of the sword showing you the sign and time you're living in Oh my gosh, friends. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Now let's drop down to verse 10. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. You see, that's why Rome is not going to be content with Russia making a deal with Abbas, or Russia making a deal with Israel. That's a pet peeve for the Vatican because thou has said these two nations, two-state solution, anybody ring a bell there? The Vatican got involved in that. The Vatican is the one that declared a Palestinian state. The Vatican is the one that signed the deal with them that they are an actual nation. The Vatican is there to take Israel and the Palestinians for themselves. That's why they want a United Nations force. This is why you saw Shimon Perez who betrayed his own people and gave the Vatican a promise that they would get all of Jerusalem. It would be divided. He'd put a United Nations force in Jerusalem to make sure it was done so. So do you think the Vatican is going to allow Russia to come in there? There's no way. That's the hook in his jaw. That's what's, that's what's forcing the Pope to have to bring the United States with their NATO forces to come there and to fight and knock out Russia. Russia is not Gog. It's the Prince of Gog is the Pope of Rome. And Gog and Magog and all these forces 
are these Arabic nations that are all allied with NATO and the Vatican and everything else that will fight this war. Now, what, what happens immediately, immediately after, after they, that, that the United States found out that Russia is signing the oil deal with, or trying to get the oil deal with the Israelis for Leviathan, then what does Obama do? This is immediately after this. Only within days, Obama sends more special forces to Syria in a fight against ISIS. President Barack Obama announced on Monday the biggest expansion of U.S. ground troops in Syria since its civil war began, but the, but the move was unlikely to mollify Arab allies angry over Washington's cautious approach to the conflict. Why? Because Saudis and the Turkish have been pouring tons of money and resources into trying to overthrow Assad. See, even the Pope of Rome, the Pope of Rome is always talking about he's concerned about the refugee crisis. He's not concerned about his own Christian brothers over there in the Middle East, as, it, as we saw recently when he goes down to Greece and he promises even the Christian Arab Christians to bring them back to Rome. He doesn't bring them back. What the Arab Christians ought to recognize that he ain't a Christian. What does he do? He's trying to make good, good alliance with, the, with all of his uh, Muslim friends. So he brings the Muslims back to Rome instead. Oh my gosh. The mother of harlots. The deployment of up to 250 special forces soldiers increases U.S. forces in Syria roughly sixfold and is aimed at hel uh, helping media fighters, uh, excuse me, militia fighters who have uh, clawed back territory from Islamic State mil militants in the string of victories. It's not because of that. It's because Russia made the announcement about what they're going to be doing in Israel or what they're trying to do in Israel. It's because that story was leaked. Now you want, now let's just remember this. Now this is, this is an extra biblical source here. It's not part of our own canon, but it is certainly worth looking at from the Apocalypse of Thomas as part of the Apocrypha. And remember, the Apocrypha at one time, not in modern days, scholars are all, heads are all twisted backwards nowadays, but at one time the word Apocrypha was not a bad word. It was considered to be the books for people that had better understanding. You know, they were the ones that read the, the Apocrypha books. But nonetheless, regardless of, and there again, I've always said, I can't say what's correct in these books, what's not. I look for the common thread that links it even with our own canon, all right? That's what I look for, that common thread. And you should do it. It's important, you know, because our canon that we have, we believe it to be truly inspired of God, but there's other books out there that, that, that dovetail with what we have written and in some cases help answer the questions we're not, that we don't, we don't have the full picture of. All right, let's look at what, what, what Thomas said. And after that, again, a king shall arise in the south part of the world and shall hold rule a little space in whose days the treasury shall fail because of the wages of the Roman soldiers. Where did, where did the... Uh, Pope of Rome come from? Argentina, the king of the south. He rose up and he is a Roman pontiff and the economy is on the verge of collapse because of the wages of his Roman soldiers of NATO. He is fighting battles like crazy. He looks like a peacemaker, doesn't he? Doesn't, doesn't Jesus say, they shall say peace and safety and there is no peace? They're trying to fake a millennial reign and he wants Israel to be for the, for, for, to, to, and he's even trying to give the Jews a Messiah, and it's not their Messiah. I've got another message the Lord's been laying on my heart to bring to you, and I, I really want to bring it out. Friends, listen to me. We do need your help, and we thank you, those who have been helping us to make this ministry possible. And we have so many expenses that it takes to make things happen. We need your help. We thank you for helping, and we thank so many of you that do. And it doesn't matter the amount. Every little bit helps us keep it going. Pray with us. Even if, the, if, if that matters more than anything. If you're a prayer warrior, we need your prayers. I desperately need your prayers because God is dealing with me on many issues. If you can help financially, we thank you and ask God to bless you. And IsraeliNewsLive.org, you can go there and give online or our mailing address at the end of this video. Shalom, God bless you. Pray about what I've told you this evening. I believe these things to be true. And we need to be more watchful for what is truth and not be duped into just every person comes along and writes a book.
I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment of our broadcast show.